Hey guys, here's Louie. And on this video, I am going to share with you guys what exactly I am using on the 68 Firebird project. Okay, some things I did use when I build my other Firebirds or I work on other people's cars. Okay, um, I always, always try my best to save money because the more money I get to save, the more Firebirds Louis gets to buy and spend money on. So, as you guys can see, these are the supplies I am using, the tools and all that stuff. I'm going to break it down. Because guys that are starting this hobby, I mean, I remember when I started, I hate when I hear people showing off or acting like they was brought into this world with all this knowledge. That's totally, totally a lie. My best tool to develop the knowledge that I have was experience was falling on my face, getting back up, and fixing my mistakes, learning from my mistakes, and see why it didn't work out, and why, how can I make it better, how can I make it to work out, that's just the honest truth, guys, so, in other hands, if you don't dive in, and get it done, start to get it done, you would never imagine, you would never would have an idea if you was capable of doing it, okay? You have to dive in, and like I always say, you have to keep your hands dirty. That's it. That's the truth. I'm as honest, as open, as honest as they come. That's it. That's the way I am. All right? So I will never have imagined if, if anybody came to me some years back when I started getting into this hobby and told me you one day will become so good at it or this, that, and the other, <laughs> I would have probably thought the person was out of his, their minds. But I cannot imagine and I didn't imagine my wildest dream that today... Okay, I don't consider myself the best. I would never consider myself the best. But I could tell you, I'm fairly good at what I do with these first-gen Firebirds, which I love. Okay, so let me show you guys a little bit of the car over here. So over here, we got the 60A Firebird Final Prime. Okay, Final Primer went on. All right, I did do some sanding already, so if you could see, she's really smooth. Okay, a little dusty because I was working on the other panels. All right, and the fenders, I just shot the fenders with the final coat of primer yesterday. I still got to do the final sanding on this, these fenders over here. But believe me, compared to how these fenders used to look, they look excellent now. All right. Uh, the driver's side, which this is the one we're looking at right now, the driver's side. Guys, this originally was a 19, or I should say is, but now it's a Firebird Fender. But originally when I picked up this Fender, it was a 1968 Camaro driver's side Fender. Original Camaro Fender, not aftermarket. And Louie turned it into a bird fenders. Well, why not? Uh, nothing against Camaro, but you guys turn our birds into Camaros. I turn your Camaros into birds. So this is a first generation Firebird 67, 68 fender now. One day, if you guys really want me to get into the real details of how to convert one into a Firebird Fender, let me know, and I even go out there, buy one, and I'll make a video on that. And this Fender is an original 68 Fender, original to the car Fender. I did some fixing here, too. These are the doors. The doors came out excellent. Um, 
that's the driver's door because it has the mirror and guys i'll post pictures in the beginning of the video and you guys can see that's where the the edge let this thing zoom in now that's where the edge of the door was buckled because it looked like it got hit from the front so the accident came towards the back and buckle and crease the door hammer and dolly is your friend now nah, do not beat the crap out of the panel treat it nice and gentle like a lady and she'll come out beautiful all right and i'm really happy how it came out i mean i'm excited it's amazing how you could put these tools together of course and make things beautiful again i have a whole bunch of vice grips because of course i like to fix metal and all that this is just a simple harbor spray hammer and dolly set that i picked up some years ago and that being said i guess i am moving up to the big leagues now and the reason i'm saying this is because let me share something with you guys about louis I picked up a welder, I picked up a cutting wheel, grinders, and all that kind of stuff. You could possibly imagine what it takes for these cars to get done. Years back, some years back, okay, about a decade or so ago, all right, when I was um, still working on my 67 Firebird, I have my 67 Firebird for 20 years this October. October 17 will make exactly 20 years that I have my 67 fiber, which means a whole lot to me. I bought her technically when I was 21, 20, 22. The next day I turned 20, 23, I believe. I know I was 20 years ago. I'll be, I'll be 42. So I guess I bought her when I was 22. Anyway, that being said. I had no idea in what I was doing, okay? But I wanted to see my car out there in the road again, driving and enjoying it because I always have loved classic cars and I love Firebirds, all right? So what I'm trying to say is I moved to the big leagues because I really didn't watch a whole bunch of YouTube when it came, a matter of fact, there was no YouTube when I bought the car. What I used to do is go to Bars and Nobles and sit down and read and look and make copies. Back then, I don't know, it was like five cents a copy or something like that. Now, God only knows. But of old books showing you how to restore a car. That's how I had to do it. So there is no excuse, no more for anybody okay the answer how to get it done is right in the tips of your finger and that's your cell phone that's your laptop computer at, at home online everything is there guys like me guys like jonathan at vinyl village garage all right guys like brian menson at arrowhead garage i mean we are showing you how to get these cars done so i didn't have that privilege okay and i had to learn by myself but one thing you guys got to remember mechanic work is different than body work okay even in a professional body shop you have your metal guys you have your body guys that does the filler work the sanding work you have your painters okay so i had to combine all of those and just be one i am that guy one person because in this shop in my garage I have to do all three. But for at least five years, I would say now, at least five years now, I've been watching a gentleman by the name Jerry. And he's on YouTube. He has a great YouTube channel doing body work. And this guy tells you how it is, point blank. That's what I love about his um, YouTube channel. He shows you the tools he used, the techniques, how to get it done. And let me tell you something. You could watch people like Jerry. You could watch people like me. 
people like Jonathan, people like Brian, until you get blue in the face. But if you don't get into the garage or wherever you're working on your car and you don't get on it, <laughs> you're not going to experience it. You're not going to learn because you have to take that knowledge that we are showing you. Like I took the knowledge of Jerry and I went with it. And of course, as you go, you even pick up your own way of how to do it and get the job done. All right. And he is excellent. He's at Lakeside auto body that's lakeside auto body please go check out his channel you won't regret it and that's where i really wanted to focus when it came to restoring these cars was the body work because to me that's just a totally different art a totally different gift It's all separated um people always tell me i have a gift and i don't grant it okay yes i i do believe i have a gift because i i picked up the tools and i ran with it you know, and I really believe that's what Jesus Christ put me here for. I mean, that's the gift he gave me. He gave everybody a gift. But what I'm trying to say is if you get guys like that, like Jerry at Lakeside Auto Body, you will learn a lot. You'll pick up a lot. If you really want to learn, check him out. I used to bounce from back and forth looking at other guys. And nope, I canceled all that out five years ago. And I just look at his shows. And I'm happy to say we are good friends because um, we actually call each other from time to time and exchange information and all this kind of stuff on, on these kind of work and things that are going around the hobby and stuff like that. And I am so proud to say that he sent me this body hammer right here. Okay. Sad thing is, I just received this, and it looks like the FedEx guy dropped it a couple of times. So he split the wood. I'm going to fix it. But Jerry, the hammer is here at First Generation Garage. God bless you, my friend. Thank you for being a mentor for me. Thank you for expiring me with your videos. Thank you for my body hammer. I needed this pick body hammer. And... I want you to know this hanged up in my hung up in my garage. You will always be a part of my bills. Every time I see it, I'll be thinking about you. Now let's get to the supplies. So there's a whole bunch. When I mean a whole bunch, I mean hundreds and hundreds of sandpaper primers sanding blocks okay i mean there's a whole bunch there's there's a whole bunch of things out there all right and because there are so many things out there i'm gonna tell you what i have bought that i have like and i don't change it that's what i use Every time I'm running down on supplies, I go back and buy some more, or order some more. So I don't, I think it's um, really important for me to share my experience about what I have have and what, what has been working for me. Okay. So my sandpapers of choice is Duragold. All right. I just get them from Amazon. I hope you guys can see that. All right. The box on top comes with different kind of grits. All right. They also make them on just one grit if you want to use, let's say, 220. And this box, they'll sell you 50. 220 is about $19, $20, okay, on Amazon. <clears throat> and just for you guys to understand something, so when I am doing my filler work and the filler is nice and dry, I start sanding with 80 grit, 180, 220, and I stop at 220. Okay, that's it. The only way I could imagine for you to use a 40 grit sandpaper is if you're trying to sand off some paint from a panel or you use the very strong and hard fiberglass on filler, the one that comes with the little kitty hair in it. 
If I mean, if you wait for that thing to dry all the way, it's like trying to sand a, a brick. But I only have 40 grit because when I'm trying to strip a, a panel to, to bare metal. But yes, so I like Dura Gold. You guys could go buy Dura Gold. Never let me down. Let's move. Let's move down. These are the 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 Scotch Bright um pads. Okay. Red and gray. So red, pretty much the grit is like three twenty. It is three twenty grit. Down here, the gray is about eight hundred grit. All right. And the reason you need this, I also get that from Dura Gold right there, Amazon. All right. That's it. Right there, I try to zoom in for you guys to see the information on the box. This costs about 17 bucks. Worth it. <laughs> that will last you a long, long, long time. Okay. Um, I also bought the Dura Gold. These goals on your sanding blocks. That sandpaper goes on your sanding block. They are the long board rolls. All right, and they measure two and three and three quarters by 20 yards. They last a long time. All right. Another, this is 220 in this box. That's what I like to use for final sanding on filler. Okay. Even to give a bite on the panel, I will sand all over the panel with that. Now, these Scotch Bright right here is really important. I'm going to tell you why. You'll, you'll grab one. And when you're going to do your panel, like the edge of this door, you'll, you'll scuff it. All right? You'll scuff it with that because you want it to have a tooth for when you're applying paint or primer. If it doesn't have a tooth and you happen to blow air on the panel or tape, you're going to rip the paint right off. So always try to sand your edges, your door opening edges, your your body lines. When I when I when I start to sand, I stay away from the body line. But but I go back to it with a scotch bright, like I just showed you on the table, with a scotch bright to give it a tooth. Okay. Now also the body line here. You don't want to sand that with sandpaper. You'll 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 go through. You'll go through the primer. And there you go. You have problems. You have to shoot it again with primer. So I use the Dura Gold sandpaper. All right. If I'm not using a DTM, which means direct to metal primer, which the one that I happen to buy to do this car, shop line GP, GPP, GPG, sorry, project, product. This um, primer over here is not direct to metal. Okay, so when I don't have a direct to metal primer, I use self etching primer just on the spots that you have metal showing. All right, this is also from you, Paul. I, I hope you guys can see that number there, the part number. And this one is a Rostolium one. Okay, it's green and it dries green. Etching primer just to protect the bare metal i use that all right then um as for your spraying guns okay your paint sprayer i will never ever talk bad about the purple gun from harbor's freight never this was this what made me feel comfortable and buying the more expensive guns the more reliable guns if you want to call it that but this was my school here what i mean about that is i learned how to dial in a gun i learned how to clean a gun i learned everything with the purple gun some years back and i love it until this day i have some of them in a, in a box brand new i i collect them <laughs> Because when I get tired of cleaning them, I just throw them out, pick up another one. Harbor's Freight sometimes have them on sale for 10 bucks. And to this day, I love it. I'll be honest with you. I spray those fenders and these two doors 
with that gun. I have a video of how I drilled out the hole. I believe it's a 516 drill bit I use. I watched another guy do it. I, I, I did it. It works. She just flow beautifully. I keep that gun at 30 PSI at the gun. By the time it gets to spray out, might change on you a little bit. So I go 30. She's recommended to go like 20, 25. But I stay at 30, never had a problem. So for you guys out there that are first time users on a spray gun, go right ahead, knock yourself out, go to Harbor Freight and pick up the purple gun and learn how to use one first. Do not throw your money around. This is my paint gun. You guys want the information? That's the box. That's my paint gun. This is the gun I used to shoot the red paint on my interior. It was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I mean, nice and smooth. Here is when you get, get to learn from a gun that costs you nearly $200 or $200 and over. I got it for less than that. I was lucky. But trust me. What a, you know, difference on, on the trigger, nice and smooth, how it atomized the, the paint, beautiful. But once again, go back to this one. If you're a beginner, please go back to this one and learn with this one. All right, guys, you need a pressure gauge on your guns, on your paint guns, your paint sprayers. One thing is that the Harbor Freight ones, this is plastic. All right, where you could read the numbers, the protection here, the lens is plastic. So if you put some paint thinner on it, it starts to fog up on you. All right, what I do is I just wet it. If I could read the number and set it, and then I just keep using them because I ain't going to throw it away for that. If you could get some with glass, with a glass lens, it's better. But that's just a heads up on that. Okay, and then here is the new system for me. Okay, it's been out for, for a few already, but this is new for me. And the reason I'm sharing it with you guys, because it's awesome. I love it. You don't have to worry about cleaning no more cups on your gun. You don't have to worry about cleaning the cups no more. Okay, you put this disposable liner inside the Spectrum Universal Paint System. Harvest Rate. Now, guys, don't get this mixed up, okay? These are your refills. This box here is your refill. This is the first one you need to buy. Why? Because this is the one that brings the cup. Cup have measurements here. Okay. And the collar. Without the cup or the collar, this is useless. This is just the refills. When I mean just the refills, I mean this is your liner and the cap. Okay. Then the adapter for your gun, for you could use the spraying system, the Spectrum. Here it is. I picked it up on Harbor Freight. I used it already. I don't regret it. Beautiful. 3M does make one, but not everybody has 3M money. Okay? I don't. So I stay away from the 3M. But let me tell you something. This worked just fine. Okay? You put it to your gun. You tie it up. With uh, a wrench, very lightly, not like a gorilla, she doesn't leak on you or nothing. I love the way it worked. I really did. I used it on my primer so far. Okay, and basically, basically, this is the cup. This is the liner. Try. Let me see if I could demonstrate it for you guys. Okay. So... This is your cup. This is the liner. This is the cap for the for the liner and the cup. Now, this comes with a screen. I don't know if you guys can see that. I hope you guys can see that. But that comes that comes with a screen. I don't know if you can see the difference. You see how clear that this one is foggy? Because it's a screen. The screen, you bust it with your finger and take it right out. Blow some air. All right. Clean it up. It, it it comes off very easy. The reason I don't like the screen is because it just looks like your, your primer or your paint is not going to flow that easy on it. I mean, the holes on it the, is really, really fine. So I just take it out. I had no problems. 
and then you put it when you when you put this it's not it doesn't close right away all right so you gotta you gotta push it but once you push it you leave it on the table and you force it down she's great okay then your collar over here put it on top screw it if you feel that she's crooked take it off because you have it crooked and make sure she's just tight like i said don't don't be a gorilla Ugh. no don't don't do that all right then once you have that all tying up and you have this on your on your sprayer and you have the adapter here on your sprayer this basically locks in okay push it in she locks in okay you will have this of course on your gun all right and once she locks in you're gonna spray no problem she's on your gun you go you take it off all right take take this um collar Take the collar off, you screw it off, and you take off the lid, you throw away the lid and the liner. So you're basically throwing these two away. Okay, garbage. Here's your gun, stays clean, you're ready to spray again. All right, like I said, I absolutely love it. Okay, I absolutely love it. It worked great for me. This is the wet and dry sandpaper I use. This is the one I use in the body of the car, and that's 600 grit. All right, 600 grit. It, say, it says it right there, 600 grit. And the car feels as smooth as a baby's behind, okay? It's great. And I'll be honest with you, you want good body work, final body work, you have to work hard on it. You need this kind of pad, all right? This is called the soft pad, all right? Wet sanding block, here it is. She's very flexible, all right? And what you do is you take out one of the sheets here, one of these papers, and you fold it. And you wrap it around your block and you start sanding okay now this is the guide coat i used that's the guide coat i used and i absolutely loved it all right she dry fast she did not clog my sandpaper it was great that's the one louis used i'm just sharing it with you let me see what else i have here the Dura blocks. This is what I have as blocks. Okay, of course this. I picked this up in Harbor's Free. I love this. This thing, I don't think there's nobody out there that could make a mistake with these kind of blocks. All right. This is my Dura block um, set. All right. They have a round one. I like that because on the first gen, um, the quarter panels here, this is round going this way. So I wrap um, sandpaper on it, or I have the sticky sandpaper, it sticks on, and it just gives me a nice, that contour on the lip of the wheel well. Over here on the quarter panel, beautiful. Okay, on the fenders also, on the fenders, awesome. All right, and I'll be honest with you guys, I picked up this set of Dura blocks on Facebook Marketplace. The guy only used it once, I pay $40. That goes for like from 100 to 100 and something. When you could find it under $100, let's say maybe in the 70s, I mean, you're lucky. And the bonus point for this is that the set only brings one of these. And this set that the man sold me came with two. So I did really good with that. This is a palm sander also bought in harbors freight let me let me tell you guys something about this okay it's 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 okay it's worth it it's a good tool i never have problems with it but you need a lot of experience 
Okay, I'm in a level now that I feel confidence that to use it when it comes to sanding. All right, sanding primer and sanding body filler. But if you're new, it has a it has a speed control right here. Have a speed control right there. All right. And just practice on something that you're going to scrap first until you get the hang of it. But it's excellent. Okay. And the Windex, the Windex is there and the alcohol is there. I got this from the Dollar Tree. Got the alcohol from the Dollar Tree. This is what I use to clean my panels. Before I shoot primer, before I shoot paint, this is what I use. I will, I will, if I'm doing metal work or anything like that and to clean, I use the alcohol. Even if I'm going to scuff something, I'm not going to, let's say, take off all the paint and I'm going to scuff it or sand it close to the metal, but not exactly bare metal. I will clean it with alcohol. But like these panels you saw, my fenders, my door, my car, and the state that they are, that they already sanded and everything. I wipe it down with Windex. Okay. Then I take a tack cloth, wipe the car, and shoot the paint. All right. These are the strainers. These are the strainers. These are the strainers for when you're going to put pour either primer in your gun or paint. Please strain it out. Don't think you're not going to have a headache if you do not use a strainer. You will. Also in Harbor's Freight. Guys, when you're going to use big primers like this, a whole gallon, buy yourself a pouring spout. Okay? It's only cost me like $2 in Ace Hardware Store. It'll make your life easy. You won't be pouring paint all over the place. Things that are expensive, like this primer, two hundred and something dollars. I did not want to. I did not want to make a mess with that. All right, um, this gun, this gun will will work better with a bigger compressor because the application of it is telling you that it needs so much um, psi. Okay, I have used it. I love it. Also, Harbor's Freight. Sometimes you see these for like twenty dollars, twenty five dollars. But I love it when I shoot like um, a heavier primer. I like it. And I tell you what I use this for too. Like the inner fenders. Okay. The inner fenders. The, the firewall. The frame. I, I don't use automobile paint for those things. Okay. I use Rust-Oleum. All right. I use the oil-based paint basically. And this thing shoots it beautifully. Okay. And then, um, last but not least, um, if not the, the most important, guys, safety, use your mask. Okay, Harbor's Free has the same exact mask. That's where I got it from. Gloves to protect your hands. You're messing here with chemicals. Of course, you're going to need paint cups, sticks, paint stirring sticks, um, cleaning, cleaning brushes for, for your paint guns. Okay, brushes, you're going to need all that. All right. Uh, what else? Oh, now, let me, Um, I told you guys before that if you was interested in, in, a, in primer video, this is going to be a quick primer video also. So this primer, will I use it again? Most likely, no. I'm going to tell you why. My first time using it. Do I like it? Yes, it's a high build primer. It says what it is, but it's not a DTM direct to metal primer. Okay. It's um a high build primer, but it, it costs money. It costs, it's, you know, it's a little expensive to me. All right. Is it good? Yes, it's good. You guys want to go out there and buy it as a high build primer? Knock your socks out. But if you're trying to watch your wallet, and be more friendly with the hobby money-wise, I'll do this. So I want to clarify and I want to correct myself on something. This was the red oxidized 
lacquer primer I was using on the car. When you saw the pictures with a, with a red lacquer primer, this is it right here, okay? And let me tell you something. It's not bad at all. I take everything that I said in the other video, okay? It, it was actually good. I had a problem with the filler where I did the filler work. And I was shooting this primer like two times. I kept seeing it bleed through. But talking to Jerry, talking to Jerry, a man that is way more experienced than me when it comes to this. He said, Lewis, you was probably mixing it too light, too thin. And he likes to mix it like a chocolate milk, um, let's say thickness, right? A little bit like chocolate milk thickness or a little thicker. And that gives you more coverage, builds up faster. And guess what? I tried it. I tried it on the 68 fiber here before I even used this primer. And the bleed throughs went away. Totally went away. The reason I bought this is because I heard so much horror, sto horror stories about the lack of primer and the new paint and blah 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 let me tell you something i take jerry words for it he never had a problem he's been doing it for years and like he said lack of primer been out for years decades or used by professional auto body repair shops all the way to the 90s and I did the test. People was like, oh, they're gonna, it's gonna lift off on you, blah, 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 blah. When this thing dried, I put tape on the lacquer paint and I took it all and I took off the tape <laughs> and never peeled off. Never. Okay. And I also did it because this gray primer is shot on top of that lacquer primer, but I had to sand that primer down to do it. So. Will I ever use this primer? That's the question. Yes, I will use it. I'm not 100% sure if this one is a direct to metal. But Jerry, if you're watching the video, leave a comment for me and for the audience if it's a direct to metal. So this is a lacquer primer and it's cool because it's a one to one mixing ratio. One part primer. Lacquer primer. To one part lacquer thinner. Okay. Price. The price online. Today. Okay. We in the year 2023. July. 83.97. Delivered to your house. Where I'm at anyway. In Pennsylvania. It started like around $59. Deliver. Here's the price. 83.97. Okay, and the reason I like this is I'm going to tell you something. It ain't that expensive. That's for a gallon. That's, that price is for one gallon. All right. Here's your gray. That's the numeration for your gray because they have two. And that's the numeration for the red oxalite. This is the one I had. The reason I wrote this down for you guys is because I don't have it no more. So I can't show you the, the product, how it, exactly how it looks. But look it up online. That's it. Okay, and the reason I like this is because if when you're mixing it in your cup, so this is a this is a cup, right? That will be on your sprayer, on your sprayer, your paint sprayer. Whatever you did not use, you could pour it back into the gallon of lacquer. Okay, it's not like 2K. This this is 2K, the one I bought here. 2K primer. 2K primer just meaning that. It takes an activator. So the activator is here. See? 2K. This is the hardener for this. And, and whatever you don't use, you have to throw it out. Okay? And it becomes more expensive. Now, here's the number one primer for me. Did I ever use it? Yes, I did. I happened to use this primer when I was repairing... The two fenders from my buddy's Dan, 69 Firebird. The videos are out there for you that you guys that didn't watch it. But I did some crazy metal surgery to those fenders. They came out beautiful. This is what I use. You pull. You pull 
Here's the part number of the Yupu I use. It's a high bill primer, okay? Multi-purpose primer. So you get the best bang for your money. Multi-purpose primer, okay? So it's a three-in-one primer. Three-in-one primer. One. Mix four to one for a primer filler. So you're going to mix it four to one, okay? Primer filler basically is a high bill primer, okay? Two, four parts paint to one to one. So reducer and hardener, okay? Four, a primer surfacer. Three, four, one to two for a primer sealer. Now sealer, here comes a topic here, sealer. All right. So let's say, let's say this car had a, um, different shades, colors, whatever. Let's say I'm doing this and it had a little color here and I just sanded it down enough to shoot primer on top of it and you didn't want that to have any issues and you just wanted everything on one uniform, one color. Like you see, everything here is basically all that primer color and, you know, different colors. That's when you will seal it. That's when you use sealer. So if you're going to use sealer on a car before you paint it, it's a one-shot deal. You seal the car, one coat of sealer, let it flash off, and then you paint. Okay? So it's all these three. High bill primer, primer surfacer, and a primer sealer. I mean, that's amazing for this price. Online. Free shipping, $109.95. One gallon plus the hardener on eBay. I'm going to give you guys... I'm going to give you guys an advice. Even you guys that are just starting to cut up on your cars and welding on your car and blah, 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 blah. Okay? <laughs> I wish even three years ago... I know things was going to get crazy with the prices spiking up. I would have bought these things. I would have just bought it, put it on the shelf. Because in that little bit of time, two years, three years, I don't see this getting spoiled on your shelf. Okay, matter of fact, my buddy has this U-Pool primer for almost three years in his shelf. And the thing is, I take it out. I use it. I never had an issue. All right. So this is the winner for me, for my wallet. Is you pool? I continue using you pool at a hundred and nine dollars with ninety five cents shipped to my house with the hardener. Okay, so I'm ready to rock and roll. If I want to do any of these different ratios, but if I just want it for a high bill primer, I don't need nothing else. Okay, if I want to do these two right here, two and three, then I will need reducer for that price compared to this two hundred and something dollars. No way. Now, the PPG paint, the red paint that I that I um, bought to do the interior is also the white paint PPG. Excellent. Excellent. The red paint came out beautiful. It's covered right now because I don't want it to get messed up. But yes, no doubt about it. Whatever it costs me, I don't regret it. Okay, I can't remember the price right now from the top of my head, but I don't regret it because it, it came out excellent. I really don't re regret the primer, but what I'm trying to say is you could do better with the money and a different primer. Okay, now my next step will be to use this guy coat here on the fenders. All right, I'm up to this part. And then sand it. I like to use wet sand. I like to do the wet sanding process. It's a lot. It, 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 it's work. Okay. I like it. Don't bother me. Okay. And it will get your garage floor a little messed up. But there's nothing you could just put the garden hose to the floor and wash it off. Okay. Sometimes I even will take the car outside. Like my car is a driver. The 60 is a driver. It's a functioning car. I could take it outside to the front of the garage outside west sand it and just use the garden hose and hose down the the ground no problem 
So I hope you guys enjoy this video of the supplies that I use, okay? Any regular guy could afford this because if I could afford it, you guys could afford it. And I will never lie to you guys. These are the things that I use, all right? That's it. On all my birds, I basically have used everything here and I get good results, all right? By the way, before I forget, if you're going to get into this hobby the way I am, do not be buying lacquer thinner and a little gallon or something like that. You're going to just waste your money. Buy the five gallon one. It's going to last you a long time. And it's better. More cheaper. Then I bought this from Harvest Freight the other day. All right. It's a working platform. Aluminum lightweight working platform. 40 inches long. Because I am short. <laughs> I'm only 5'5". Five five, okay. I'm only 5'5 five five in height. And I plan to put the 68 Firebird on jack stands when I'm going to be painting the 68 Firebird. I plan to put it on jack stands so she's going to be up high and I'm too short for it. And to be able to paint that roof, I need a couple of inches of help. I bought that on sale. I don't even think I spent $50 on it. There you go. And here is my gun holder my paint sprayer holder also bought in harvest free i love the thing uh your workbench is going to get disgusting once you start getting into the painting game but if you cover it with paper it's an easy cleanup all right well guys wish me luck i'm really close i'm like this to getting the bird with white feathers take care god bless bye bye